All right, joining me right now from the Media Research Center is Dan Gaynor. And, you know, I, I want to point out I know John. I, I've always liked John. I, I, I know his politics, which is far more to the left. I guess what I'm taking issue with here, it, and I'm questioning you about Dan, is why is someone like that actually on stage asking a question to the Republican field like that? Um, and, and, and how is that allowed, frankly, by a network? I mean, how can you be the chief political correspondent at a place when you so clearly have an agenda? Well, thanks, Trish. This is just, this is the, the major mindset of the media. And so it's not like he stands out. He's not a flaming Michael Moore leftist. He's just standard, you know, uh, fresh from the factory, uh, media biased liberal. Mm -hmm. And so, I think what happens is the people who chose the debate uh, moderators on the GOP side were trying to you know, scratch around the edges, see if they could salvage what we all know is a failed system. The current system of having so-called neutral journalists do the debate mm -hmm. has failed for everybody except for Fox. And that's not a system that. I mean, that at this be point, maintained. would you say John Harwood is more? Uh, and again, very, very nice guy. Uh, but clearly has a bias, uh, would you say he'd be better off with, as a future as a commentator? I mean, just come out and say it, right? Well, I mean, he works for the New York Times. They openly said that they've shifted their news media organization mm -hmm. toward <laughs> making one candidate win and one candidate lose. They are not neutral. People work at the New York Times, including several people I used to work with, people I consider friends. What has happened, Dan? There. I only point this out because I think in old school journalism circles, you know, you, you at least kind of tried a little bit to pretend that, you know, you didn't have a, a personal stake in all of it and you weren't rooting for one side over the other. And now it, it, it feels as though actively organizations uh, that were formerly prestigious organizations really are touting one candidate over the other, Dan. Well, one, things haven't changed all that much. It's Walter Cronkite's 100th birthday today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, remember he very famously said the Vietnam War was unwinnable right after we won the Tet Offensive. And he worked behind the scenes with Democrats then. Helen Thomas did it. Uh, Edward R. Murrow did it. It's not new that the people who lead the field are maybe are we're just exposing lefties. it more. Then I mean, maybe you know, WikiLeaks has basically caught in a, this fellow uh, over at CNBC twice in a situation what? where he's really uh, reaching out to the campaign in a way that it, it's pretty borderline, Dan. Well, it's, and it's not just him. It's across the board. I found eight instances of times where the Clinton people, through WikiLeaks, were sure stories were going to be good before they were even published. You know, you've got the communications people from, from Team Clinton saying, mm -hmm. oh, we're positive. This is going to be a good story. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about So in CNN. other words, they've located their friends amongst the media, and they'll only talk to their friends. Well, no, it's that most of the media are their friends. Sure. It's not that they'll only talk to their friends. It's that they can pretty much toss story oh. ideas out to the mob, and they're all their friends, pretty it's, much. It's, it's, it's amazing to see. Um, I, you know, I, I, I sometimes wonder how it is or why it is um, to be debated for another time, Dan, because <laughs> we're, we're out of time this go-around. But thank you so much.